Good morning. I'd like to welcome our next speaker, uh, Stan Forsek. Stan is the CEO and Principal Consultant for GI Consulting LLC, and he offers clients over four decades of expertise in transportation, energy planning, and strategic planning and operations management, including many years as a financial infrastructure executive with Amtrak and an energy management executive with major regional energy consulting firm. Stan is also the advisory board chair for the Coalition for a National Infrastructure Bank. Thank you for joining us, Stan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you, Tana, and uh, good day to everyone that's out there. Uh, Tana has given a brief description of what I do. I'm on the advisory board for National Infrastructure Bank. And uh, I'm, I'm here to present the bank and, and what we're trying to do with it insofar as uh, moving forward with uh, upgrading all of the infrastructure in the United States. You know, for the first 170 years of this country, uh, all of the 90% uh, of the infrastructure was financed and funded by a national infrastructure bank. There have been four of them. And all the infrastructure that we have was done by those banks. And the process ended in the late 1950s. And since that time, our infrastructure has really been going downhill. So the coalition has uh, moved forward with a, a, a bill um, that uh, is HR 3339. And um, you can see it here on your screen that that is within Congress. Uh, it's the second reiteration of the bill. The first bill was done last year. This is for the new year uh, again. This is for all infrastructure across the United States. And it is a bank that will do uh, approximately $5 trillion worth of infrastructure across the country. Some folks think that's a little on the low side. Uh, some people, especially in the government, think it's on the high side. But I will tell you from my experiences that the real figure to fix the infrastructure in the United States is somewhere between seven and $10 trillion. So that's what we have. I mentioned before that there have been four banks for the first 170 years. The first one was done by Alexander Hamilton. The last one was done by Franklin Roosevelt. Those banks are responsible for all of the infrastructure. There is there in the last 60, 65 years, there has not been a major infrastructure uh, project within the United States. So everything has been decaying. Everything's been going downhill. We have major infrastructure problems across the country. And that's why we need a bank to supplement uh, the issue of, of uh, uh, the, the bill that's out there and that has been approved is too small to do anything. And that's why this bank is meant to complement everything that is there. And what we're talking about is a real bank and it needs to be capitalized. And we capitalize it in such a way that we need $500 billion in treasury bonds that people hold right now because the debt is covered with treasury bonds that the Federal Reserve is holding. And we need 500 billion to start the bank because in discussions with the Office of the Comptroller of the Congress, uh, I'm sorry, not the Congress, but the currency, we know that the ratio is 10 to one. So 500 billion would cover uh, loans uh, for $5 trillion. So we need that $500 billion in treasury bonds and we would convert them to preferred stock in the bank. The Federal Reserve would just hold that preferred stock uh, along, uh, along with the converted treasury bonds so that the bank could move forward to start loans. These, these treasury bonds are being held now by different uh, countries, China, Japan, countries in Europe, labor unions, 
uh, and other folks and large banks uh, to cover the debt of the United States. We are offering an enticement to people to actually trade in their treasury bonds uh, for an additional 2%. The current treasury bond rate is about 1.5%. So we're offering to pay the interest on that at 3.5% if it were to start today. So that's how we would get the money to start the bank. That's that's the capitalization. So we can move forward with that. And what would the bank do? Well, the bank would supercharge the American economy. All right, once that bank gets started and we start reviewing projects, we would create approximately 25 million new jobs. We would buy American. That, that means that we would bring back certain manufacturing into the United States. We also know that people from other countries appreciate the fact that they, they want to build the American economy so that they would be able to set up shop and work to promote American manufacturing. We estimate that right now the, the, the uh, productivity in the country, the GDP growth is about 2%. We know this will increase uh, the, the GDP up to five or above. There won't be any new federal taxes. There won't be any deficit spending. There will be no inflation as we supercharge the economy. <clears throat> Every sector would benefit from this. Workers would benefit because we're going to pay, we're going to pay Davis Bacon wages for those wor workers. We're going to make rural and urban improvements so that everyone will receive adequate funding, and the federal, state, and local finances will improve because revenue will improve so that the bank will be ensuring that the bank ends in the black and was able to do everything. Here is what the bank would cover. And you can see that there's a whole list of items that are out there, whether it be high-speed rail, water systems, uh, transportation, highways, bridges, uh, large-scale water projects. Everything would be covered. We're talking about $5 trillion, okay? And you can see we've allocated out there. One of the critical issues here is resiliency and the systems that provide the background for every one of these types of projects. And that is included in the figures that we've got here. Although small right now, we expect it to grow. And that's why we say the National Infrastructure Bank will be a dynamic platform that will be able to increase as we move forward. As I said, I believe that infrastructure costs would be anywhere from seven to ten trillion dollars we have provisions in the legislation that will allow the the uh, the bank to put in amendments to increase the amount of lending ability that's out there so let's look at what we've got approved that's on the table everyone knows that there was a bill approved earlier or, or last month to do infrastructure across the country. And most of us who have read the details know that it is $550 billion of new money or one tenth of what is needed right now to do the country. The country's 5 trillion, they awarded uh, or have legislated for and approved $550 billion. You can see that by going down, on the report card that we use, which is an ASCII report card, American Society of Civil Engineers, to say what is where are the deficits for infrastructure. You can see that surface transportation is $2.6 trillion. And it's broken down by uh, surface transportation, uh, roads, bridges, transit, passenger rail, uh, drinking water and power infrastructure. To the right of what we're saying the bank would cover is what is the portion of the 550 approved billion dollar infrastructure package. And you could see every one of those figures is extremely low in comparison to all of the components that are out there. 
And even if you go down to the mega projects like affordable housing, there's nothing allocated on the current uh, uh, bill that's out there. No high speed rail money. Uh, broadband access is minimal to uh, what is really needed. Uh, so you can see that what the, the president has approved is not enough money. Take, for example, the, the uh, drinking water or, or water supply systems. Uh, ASCII says $800 billion. They've allocated $55 billion. Now think about this. The city of Chicago needs to replace their water distribution system. That's going to cost $15 billion. So what we're saying is if we do Chicago, we only have $40 billion to actually work on water. That's not really going to cut it. The cost of infrastructure is much more than what has been anticipated. So it's not just the drinking water. It's not just the roads and the bridges. It's every item that's up there. It's not enough money to do anything. And let's examine what we're saying. This is one tenth of the need. That means 90% of the infrastructure is not getting going to, going to get done over the next five years as anticipated with this, uh, uh, this law. So what happens to it? I can tell you what happens. Annually, between $200 billion to $700 billion gets added to the price of that 90% of infrastructure. Now think over 10 years, if you're, if you, if you're gonna put an ad or on every year of $700 billion, what is that going to mean at the end of 10 years? That's a lot of money. So it's going to, if we don't do something now to improve the infrastructure, we may never be able to afford to do it. And I think that people have to start thinking about what we really want this country to be. And right now, this country is failing in a lot of areas one of which is infrastructure. And it's gonna to continue to fail because we're not allocating enough money for it. And that's the whole intention of the bank. All right, I mentioned high-speed rail. We need to put in high-speed rail because high-speed rail will take the urban areas that, is, that are designated within the corridors for that high-speed rail and make them into networks that will improve the living conditions of everybody around them. And I think that's the most important thing that we can do simultaneously with all the rest of the projects. So I will leave you now with that. We need a national infrastructure bank. Otherwise we're gonna reach the point where we cannot afford to do infrastructure. And I appreciate your time and effort. Please absorb everything that I've got here. Think about the cost of the infrastructure projects that will not be getting, getting done and what that's going to do to the economy 10 years out. Do we want America's children to grow up and have their own children and they will eventually have to pay a mortgage for infrastructure? Because right now we're only using an appropriations process that doesn't really work. We have to use a national infrastructure bank, the same one that had the same model that has been done four times. We need to do it a fifth time, and the same model that other countries of the world actually use. So they 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 they're using the American model. We need to bring it back to America. So thanks so much for your time. I'm free to answer any questions. I hope you got something out of this and appreciate your time. Thank you, Stan. And we will be sharing the contact information for Stan and you do have his LinkedIn profile as well. And um, if you do have questions, you can submit them through the chat 
and we'll get Stan to answer those questions after the uh, end of the presentation. So thank you again, Stan. We appreciate your time. And we will be having some uh, further updates and briefings throughout the year because we know that legislation is continuing to change and the status of the bank is continuing to change. Thank you, Tana. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time.